Welcome to this service for Palm Sunday. Those of you on the email list will have got this order of service and so you can join in saying the bits you would like to at home. If you'd like to be on that list and so get the order of service as well, please send me an email request at phrase, F-R-A-I-S, at tiscali, T-I-S-C-A-L-I, .co.uk. Welcome then, in the name of Christ, to these prayers and reflections for Palm Sunday, just seven days to go before the great Sunday of Easter. I stand under the entry arch of St Mark's to symbolise the gate through which the Lord rode. And the theme is picked up in the verse of a hymn which says, Ride on, ride on in majesty. Hark how all the tribes hosanna cry. O Saviour meek, pursue your road. With palms and scattered garments strode. We gather then in this virtual world, in this unusual season, still for the same intentions, to hear God's word, to bring our prayers to him, to declare his praises and to build ourselves up in this holy faith. The Confession is a prayer book version in modern English. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. O Lord, have mercy on us, pitiful sinners. Spare those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore those who truly repent, as you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly, righteous and disciplined life to the praise of your holy name. Amen. The Absolution. Again, the prayer book in modern English. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, does not desire the death of sinners, but rather that they should turn from their wickedness and live. He has commanded and authorised his ministers to reassure his people that they will be forgiven when they repent of their sins. God pardons and forgives all who truly repent and sincerely believe his holy gospel. Therefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, so that what we do now may please him, and that the rest of our lives may be pure and holy, and that finally we come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Did you hear the emergency vehicle go by? There you are, authentic St Mark's. We get one of those every service. And now the collect or set prayer for the Sunday next before Easter. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race, send your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The psalm comes from Psalm 118, beginning at the 17th verse. I will not die but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. 
through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in his eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine upon us. With bows in hands, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give you thanks. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Amen. And with a psalm, also a proverb. Those of you who receive the apart but together daily prayers and readings know that we're working our way through Proverbs beginning at chapter 10. So, Proverb 10, verse 15. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city, but poverty is the ruin of the poor. It's asking, what do you rely on? But it's an observation of what is generally true, but may not serve you well if you don't have spiritual treasures too. Our main reading then, of course, for Palm Sunday, the triumphal entry. And I'm going to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21. Matthew, chapter 21. I'll begin at verse 1 and work my way through to verse 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a foal, the colt of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They bought the donkey and colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds then went ahead of him, and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Heavenly Father, may fresh light shine from your word into our hearts. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Why did Jesus arrive by mule? He was the greatest leader but on the humblest of transport? Well, I think it showed three things. First, that he was king of nature. Jesus organised the use of the animal in advance. Please, never be so spiritual that you can't plan thoroughly. He sent two disciples to fetch the donkey, because work is always better in company. Even the donkey kept her foal or colt. This work animal is one which, according to Mark 11, no one had ever ridden. So instead of throwing Jesus off, remarkably, it submits at once to his control. Jesus brings peace to the world, just as he brought it to the stormy lake and the sailors who thought they would drown. And now he goes to Calvary to make peace for us. 
with our God. Do you submit to him? You know, there are some who say they do, but they're very quick to throw him off. First thing this shows, Jesus is the king of nature, the donkey submissive to him. Second thing is that he's the king of history. He fulfills the prophecy of Zechariah 450 years earlier, the one about your king coming riding on a donkey. Actually, it was even earlier than that. And adds deeper meaning to the Psalms, which must have been concluded about 800 years earlier. So when the people said, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, it had never been so true as when it was said that day. Other prophecies throughout the scriptures include the serpent crusher of Genesis 3, the Passover lamb of Exodus 12, the scapegoat of Leviticus 16, the great prophet of Deuteronomy 18, the new Joshua who takes God's people into the promised land from the book of Joshua, Joshua and Jesus being different ways of translating the same Hebrew name meaning saviour. Then there was great David's greatest son prophesied in 2 Samuel 7, or the sin bearer of Isaiah 53, or how about Jonah? Jesus quoted Jonah for himself, saying that he was greater than Jonah, both as the preacher to the nations and the one who would disappear across three days and then reappear. How good to know that this God, who says something and makes it happen, is the one in control, that there really is a hand on world history. So, Jesus arrived to show he was king of nature, on the mule to show he was king of history, and now, of course, to show he is king of people. He doesn't arrive in military might to crush you, nor celebrity bling to dazzle you, but on a labourer's animal to serve you. Incidentally, Solomon rode to his coronation on King David's mule, 1 Kings 1, 38. So there was a precedent for saying the king must come to serve. But the people that day had the king of kings and they shouted Hosanna, save, again quoting Psalm 118. Those who wanted him to confront Pilate were dismayed when he turned to the temple to talk truth to elders. Yet we're so glad he did so, to deal with eternity and where we would go. And so we can say as believers in the Christ who died for us, we are saved from the guilt of our sin. We are being saved from the power of our sin. We will be saved from the presence of our sin. What a saviour. Thank God he came. Jesus, the one who this day we remember, rode into Jerusalem through the gate on a donkey. Gracious God, we thank you for scriptures in our own language and freedom to read them. We thank you for the knowledge they bring to us of the Lord Jesus, King of Kings. We say with the crowds, save us. Thank you that you came to save us. And we pledge ourselves to serve him the great servant of the world. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. A prayer for morning prayer. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, 
We praise you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that we fall into no sin, nor run into any kind of danger, but govern and guide us at all times so that we may do what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we turn to further prayers, bringing our intercessions to the Father in the name of the Son. Gracious and compassionate God, we remember before you the Church, the Bride of Christ, in exile from each other and from her buildings, but never from her Lord. We also remember the persecuted church, praying for peace and angelic protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Queen and Royal Family, for their health and preservation, for wisdom for the government in all its many important decisions of the day, for protection and strength for NHS staff food providers and other key workers, again seeking protection, strength and health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our family and friends and neighbours, for health in mind, body and spirit. We particularly uphold the work of Bexhill Food Bank locally. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember the sick and the fearful, the lonely and the sad. Particularly thinking of those who actually have the coronavirus at the moment. We ask Lord God that you would surround them with your peace and uphold them with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank God for those who have fought the fight of faith to the end asking for comfort for all who mourn, including, of course, inevitably, God's comfort for those who have lost loved ones in this current plague. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we pray for the coming of the kingdom as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily prayer and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A favourite hymn of mine for Palm Sunday has always been, My song is love unknown. Listen to the words of verse 3. Sometimes they strew his way, and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day, hosannas to their king. Then crucify is all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry. And so the scene is set for Holy Week. Another collect for today. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. And a blessing to conclude. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining me.